Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have round six of Once Upon a TBR Honey Jar. This of course is my TBR game and we are playing to choose my June TBR. So I'm really excited. I love playing this game each time. The only thing is every time I play it I do end up with a large TBR. Um, I play it, there's colored discs in a bag and I pull it on out. And I really, really like playing it that way, but I do end up with larger number of books playing it that way, where when I did try the one month where I rolled the die, I had a smaller amount of books that went on to my TBR. That was the only month I've completed so far, um, as far as my TBR game goes. So I think what I'm going to do, I kind of came up with a new rule. I do tend to get a lot of the same colors back to back or a lot of the same colors in general throughout the game. So basically I added a new rule. If I pull two of the same color in a row, I get to move forward two spaces instead of one um, for that color, you know. So instead of like say I pull two yellows in a row, instead of just moving to the next yellow space, I get to move to the yellow space two ahead. And also if I just get three of the same color within the game, I get to move ahead uh, the two spaces again. So I think that will help cut down on these large TBRs a little bit. Um, I, I love reading. I love large TBRs. I don't stress too much about completing them. Um, it does push me to read a lot more, but at the same time, it takes away from other hobbies and things that I want to do. So there's that. I do have um, some prompts that need to go back in the honey jar. These are from my uh, April TBR that I did not complete. So even though we're playing for June, when I'm filming this, it's still early on because um, I film about a month in advance. So the first one was, that I did not complete was the book was Stranger in My Arms by Lisa Kleypas and the prompt was a bookworm and it was a free pick. So that's already back in here. I automatically put free picks, dog picks, cat picks, and a handful of others just straight back in because I like getting those. Those are fun and I like having them in here so I just put those back in. So those are already back, that one is already back in there. Then we had Montana Sky by Nora Roberts and for that one I had Elsa and Anna Frozen or Cold Landscape, and obviously I did not get that one read in April, so this one is going back in to hopefully come up again. Then we had Freedom's Choice by Anne McCaffrey, and for that one I had Pocahontas and it was Peacemaker or Diplomat. Again, did not get to that, so that one's going to go back in. And then last week we had Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett, and the prompt for that I had pulled um, Snow White number 7 rep, and again I did not get to that, so that one's going to go back in as well. Kind of give this a good shake and stir real quick um and so yeah that's gonna those can come up again i had one other book i did not finish but of course my punishment is i roll over um a book um so that one's on may tbrs it was a magic steeped in poison i actually have it right here uh and this one was Rapunzel and it was a healing aspect so that prompt's not going back in because this is my punishment so it's automatically rolling over to May's TBR. This will be the first one I'm reading in May. So it's early days in May. I, I film about a month in advance. So um, I think that's it for that. And then I do have another rollover. I did finally finish the choice, but I didn't touch Little Women. I'm going to try to read more of this in May, but it might still spill over onto June's TBR because I still have a good chunk left to go. Um, but I am hoping to get more read in May, but it's a potential rollover. Um, and then I just have some that I just want to read. Uh, so I'm hoping I can get The Fellowship of the Ring uh, by J.R. Tolkien on the TBR. I just read The Hobbit in April and really ended up loving it. So I do want to continue on with that with the Lord of the Rings series. Um, and so, yeah, I'm hoping I can get this one officially on my TBR along with the next two Dresden File series. Um, these are the last two that will get me current uh, in the series itself. I think there's supposed to be more coming out but we have Battleground and Peace Talk. I would like to read both of these 
um, at the same, like, back-to-back, -back because I've heard that that's the way to read these two. Um, I'm on Skin Games right now. I'm going to be reading that in May, so I just want to get the series up to date, and then that way when the new ones come out, I'm ready and I have it done, too. I also just finished the main series of the Lunar Chronicles, so I do want to continue on with Love and Death Story and then the little sh short story collection. So Love and Death Story is in this book called Ferris, um, and this is by Marissa Meyer, so I would like to get that officially on the TBR. And then I'm also currently reading the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa, and so I, ha I did not get Famine officially on May's TBR. I am still hoping to read it, and then I want to dive into Death in June. Um, so I'm hoping to get this officially on the TBR. If I don't, then I'll still try to read it. And if I don't get Famine read, then the Famine will take the place of Death if I am able to get it on the TBR. So it just kind of depends on what I'm able to do. And then lastly, I do have my genre thon which is, you know, a year-long readathon, and each month focuses on a different genre. For June, it is Summer Lovin', and it's to read a romance book. So my pick for this, because I'm comfortable ro with romance, um, I'm kind of looking to go to very dark romance, and so I want to read Hunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton, which is the second book in a duology. I'm supposed to read the first book in May. Um, and so this one I might change out depending on how the first book goes. Um, it just, it really just depends on how that one goes. And yeah, this is a, like a stalker romance. Very, very dark. So if you're interested in this duology, make sure you look at the trigger warnings. Don't go in blind. Look at the trigger warnings. But I'm interested, I've been interested in it, and so we'll just see how it goes. Um, but like I said, if I don't do well with the first one, I might switch it out. If I don't end up reading the first one in May, then it will take the place of this one. But that's for genre -thon. That doesn't go, have anything to do with the game anyway. So there is that. Let me go ahead and get my game board all set up, and I will be right back to get into the gameplay. All right, so I still have a reward prompt from, or a reward token rather, from um, March that I can use. If there's any genre, uh, honey jar prompts that I don't want, I can use that instead. And then just a reminder, we're going to be choosing our character first. And so if we get a one, it's Christopher Robin, which is a coming of age or a middle grade and younger. If we get a two, that's Pooh, it's a classic or a comfort read. Three is Piglet, which is an auto by author or a reread. And four is Rabbit, which is a free choice. I'm kind of hoping to get one because I haven't gotten Christopher Robin yet. But of course, I always love Rabbit. Um, that's always nice to have a free choice. So we shall see. And then also um, for the colors, blue is sci-fi, yellow is historical, green is fantasy, red is romance, orange is mystery or thriller, purple is any genre, and if we land on black, we have to mo move forward three spaces and then use the genre for that space, but I also do have to pull two honey jar prompts. The only time that doesn't apply is on the black squares up top. That one there sends us back down here to the bench. So that doesn't count. And then this one up here, we just move forward to blue, which is the last space on the square. So um, let's go ahead and see which character we are going to be playing with. Okay. And we got two. So that is Pooh, which is a classic or a comfort read. So. All right. Can I move Christopher Robin up here? the others back a little bit. Let's see what our first poll is. Okay, and do this one. And we got a yellow, so that is historical, and it only moves us to spaces. <laughs> so we need a historical that go with this one. Okay. Ooh, I like this. So this is a spirit, and this is song or music inspired. So it could either have like music as a theme in it, 
or I can randomly choose a song and it has to fit that song in some way. That's a fun one. It's one of the new prompts I put in. So, all right. Let's see what we get next. And another yellow. So, even though we're moving two because that was a double right in the row. And so this one though is a special square and we get across to green. So that's always nice. And so special square, it can be any genre. It doesn't matter. Um, yellow or green doesn't matter, but it needs to. Let's do this one. <laughs> I keep getting this one and I keep failing to read the book. So this any genre, but it needs to be a peacemaker or diplomat. All right, let's see what we get here. They're sticking. Okay, so this is a purple, which is also any genre. Doesn't move us very far, but let's go ahead and see what the prompt is. So any genre, but it needs to... This one's climbing out. So this is the princess and the frog, so it needs to be POC rep. All right, let's see what we can do here. And we're gonna go with this one. Ooh, so we got our first black. So that one, we actually move ahead three. So one, two, three is to green. So I need to pull two honey jar prompts for this, but they need to be fantasy. So let's go ahead, let's do this one. So a fantasy with an air element and let's see what I can do. Maybe this one. <laughs> so and betrayed by family. Um, so this one, if I can find a book that fits both prompts, I can just do one book. If I can't fit both prompts, I have to do two books though. So this will be interesting. All right, let's go ahead and see what we got. And another yellow. So again, this is our third yellow. So we get to move two um, yellow spaces. So one, two, um, which again, not moving us very far. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Let's do this one. Ooh! So this is Aurora and it's Flora, Fani, Fauna, and Merryweather. So just something to kind of do with like nature. All right, let's see what we got here. Hopefully bigger moves. Thankfully we've gotten the double and the three because um, we're still not moving very far. So this one is a red that's romance and it actually moves us far and we get to cross the bridge, which is nice. And I'm playing the wrong one. I'm supposed to be playing Pooh. <laughs> I just realized I wanted to play Christopher Robin. But it's supposed to be Pooh. Um, so, yeah. Let's put Pooh up there. And so, since it's a special square, it can be any genre. It does not have to be romance. But it needs to... This one... Ooh, so this is Tarzan and returning home. So like some kind of quest and they're returning back home uh, would work for that. All right, let's see what we get next. This one, ooh, so this one's a green. So not moving very far again, but that's okay. So green is fantasy. So we need a fantasy that Go ahead and do this one. Oh, we got poo. So best friends forever. So close friendship for that fantasy. All right, Let's see what we get next. So this one is a purple, and that actually moves us very far, all the way up here. So this again is any genre. And let's see here. This one. Oh, nice. 
So this is another spirit one, and this is Native American rep. Love that. All right, getting down to the close to the end here. See this? Oops, I got two. So we're gonna repull. So I saw both of them, and I don't want to be biased. So there we go. Okay, so this one is an orange. Nice. So there we are. So orange is a mystery or thriller. And it needs, let's do that one. Ooh, so this is Tigger. So it needs to be a mystery or thriller that's kind of out of my comfort zone. All right, so we need a black, a red, or a blue, and the the game will be over. So any disc I pull that aren't those three colors, just go off to the side for now. So let's see what we can do here. Blue, so that means that's the last one, and we made it to the North Pole. Blue is sci-fi, and so we are going to be doing this one. Oh, that's that's easy enough. This is physical TBR, so any books that I already own that are sci-fi, which is going to be hard, but we'll make it work. So there's that last one, and I am going to... Go choose my books, and I will be right back. All right, I am back. I got my books picked out. Took some doing, but I'm happy with what I got. I ended up not using my reward at all. Found books for everything. I almost used it on the Peacemaker or Diplomat prompt just because I keep getting that one and I'm not using it. So <laughs> hopefully this will be the month, but I decided to go ahead and save my reward because I did find a different book. Not really interested in the other two books that I used for that prompt. Um, so I did find a different book that I am interested in. That fly is going to drive me insane. Anyway, I am really glad I did decide to add in moving two spaces for two in a row or three in this, of the same color in the game. Um, because even with that, we were making slow progress at first, but it all worked out in the end, ended up with only 11 prompts, which is fantastic. We didn't have any unusable discs, so 11 is really, really great. That's definitely on the lower end for me. So first up, we had Pooh, which I messed up, and I started to play with Christopher Robin. I really want to get Christopher Robin. I have yet to get him, so hopefully next month. But we had Pooh. I realized my mistake about halfway through the game, switched him out. And Pooh is a classic or a comfort read. So for this, I'm going classic, and I'm going to be reading The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, most people know what this is about, but you have Frodo, and there's the Ring of Power, um, and they're trying to take it and get it destroyed. And so there's kind of this group of them that are working against the forces of evil to take this ring. And get it destroyed. So I'm really, really excited. Love the movies. Read The Hobbit. Enjoyed it. So I'm ready to keep up the momentum and get through the rest of the books. So there's that one. Then let's see here. We had a uh, yellow. So this is historical. And for this one, we got one of my new ones. And we got Spirit, which is song or music inspired. So excited for that one. I love the music in the movie Spirit. Like, I think it's one of the best soundtracks. And so this one, it may not quite be historical, but, you know, the honey jar prompt is the most important part of when I'm choosing books. And this is The Sweet By and By by Sarah Evans, which Sarah Evans was a country singer, um, or is. I don't know if she's still making music. There's a fly in here. Just ignore it. Um, but yeah, this, she was a country singer, kind of big more in the 90s, maybe early 2000s. And she wrote this with Rachel Hawk. Um, and yeah, I think it takes place in the 70s, so a little bit more, um, you know, not full historical, but in the 70s. And it says, um... A story about Jade, her search for real love, her one-eyed mutt, hippie mother, and quirky vintage shop. It's about looking backward while moving forward, about chasing dreams, endless country roads, and tender faith. A breath of fresh air that'll take you away and leave your heart humming a song of joy. And, I mean, it's too perfect for this prompt, so I'm going to stretch it a little bit on the historical genre. I'm happy with that, so... 
then let's see here. So again, I'm really glad I ended up doing the move forward because we immediately got another yellow. Um, and even moving forward those two squares, it wasn't getting us very far. Luckily, the second yellow had us going across the bridge to green. And since that's a special square, it's any genre, so it did not need to be historical. But we got Pocahontas again, Peacemaker or Diplomat. I almost used my reward token on this, but decided not to. Um, I'm not choosing the other two books I have pulled for this prompt because one, I'm not interested in reading it all right now, and the other one, I'm just not quite feeling it. So I decided to go with Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. Rochelle Mead is the author of the Vampire Academy books, which I've never read, um, but I did watch the movie and I enjoyed the movie. So I found, I had the first three in the series, I found one of them at the thrift store and then got the other two. Uh, and I, I'm excited to read this. So this one says, Sydney's blood is special. That's because she's an alchemist, one of a group of humans who dabble in magic and serve to bridge the world of human and vampire. They protect vampire secrets and human lives. But the last encounter Sydney had with vampires got her in deep trouble with the other alchemists. And now with her allegiance in question, her future is on the line. And it goes on, but the part I saw that makes it work for this prompt is it says, To avoid a civil war, Sydney is called upon to act as Jill's guardian and protector. Posing as a roommate in the unlikeliest of places, a human boarding school in Palm Springs, California. So, um, yeah, so she's trying to avoid civil war. She's kind of acting as a peacemaker diplomat between vampires and humans. So that works perfect. And I do hopefully I can get this prompt fulfilled with this book this time. So there's that. Then we got purple, which is any genre. And for this one, we got the princess and the frog. So it was a PLC rep. So I uh, really love that we got the princess and the frog. And for this one, I'm so excited. I hauled this a little while ago, and I've been wanting to read it ever since. So we're going to go with Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. Um, so, so excited. I've heard such good things about this one, and it's one that I've been dying to read. So it's perfect. So this one says, Simi prayed to the gods once. Now she serves them as Mami Wata, a mermaid collecting the souls of those who die at sea and blessing their journeys back home. But when a living boy is thrown overboard, Simi does the unthinkable. She saves his life, going against an ancient decree, and punishment awaits those who dare to defy it. To protect other Mami Wata, Simi must journey to the Supreme Creator to make amends, but all is not as it seems. There's the boy she rescued who knows more than he should, and something is shadowing Simi, something that would rather see her fail. Danger lurks at every turn, and as Simi draws closer, she must brave vengeful gods, treacherous lands, and legendary creatures. Because if she does it, then she risks not just the fate of all Mami Wada, but also the world as she knows it. So I can't wait to read this. This is probably going to be one of the ones I pick up early on. So, so excited for that. Then let's see here. Then we got black. <laughs> so black means I move forward three squares, which brought us to green. But that also means I have to pull two um, honey jar prompts. So green is fantasy. If I can make one book work for both prompts, that's great. Otherwise, I have to choose two books. And unfortunately, I did have to choose two books. So first up, we got a bookworm, which was Air Element. Um, it's not wanting to focus. There's like a glare. The sun is going down. So anyway, we got Air Element for the first. And then we got Lion King Betrayed by Family for the second. So... Um, like I said, unfortunately, air element was kind of hard, so I wasn't able to make one book work, but the two books I chose are perfect. So first up for air element, we have The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin, another one I've been wanting to read for a while. I found the other book by Rachel Griffin, Wild is a Witch at the thrift store. And I originally thought this was a duology for some reason. So I used it as an excuse to order this. <laughs> but I'm beyond excited to finally read this. 
So this one, it says, For century, witches have maintained the climate, their power peaking in the season of their birth, but their control is faltering as the atmosphere becomes more erratic. All hope lies with Clara, whose rare magic is tied to every season. In autumn, Clara, Clara wants nothing to do with her power. It's wild and volatile, and the price of her magic, losing the one she loves, is too high, despite the need to control the increasingly dangerous weather. In winter, the world is on the precipice of disaster. Fires burn, storms rage, and Clara finally accepts that she is the only one who can make a difference. In spring, she falls for saying, the witch training her. As her magic grows, so do her feelings for him, till she's terrified seeing will be the next one she loses. In summer, Clara must choose between her power and her happiness, her duty and the people she loves before she loses everything. From a sunny new voice comes a story about a powerful witch who must decide if using her volatile magic to help the world is worth the price of losing the person she loves the most. So, so excited. There's that one. And then for Family Betrayal, um, or Betrayed by Family, I chose Fable by Adrian Young, another one I've been wanting to read for a while now. Um, I got this one and the second one in the series for Christmas, and then I did get the uh, prequel to it as well. I went out and got that one, so I'm so excited to finally try Adrian Young. I've been holding off on getting spells for forgetting. I know that's her adult book and these are YA, but I wanted to try out her writing before I get that one, but that's another one I've been really interested in. So if I enjoy these, I'm definitely going to be picking that up as well. So welcome to a world made dangerous by the sea and by those who wish to profit from it, where a young girl must find her place and her family while trying to survive in a world built for men. For 17-year-old Fable, the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows, the sea is the only home she has ever known. It's been four years since the night she watched her mother drown during an unforgiving storm. The next day, her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep to herself, learn to trust no one, and rely on the unique skills her mother taught her. The only thing that is keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island, finding her father, and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew. To do so, Fable enlists the help of a young trader named Wes, get her off the island and across the narrows to her father. But her father's rival rivalries and the dangers of his trading enterprise have only multiplied since she last saw him, and Fable soon finds the West isn't who he that West isn't who it seems. Together they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the Narrows if they're going to stay alive. So I'm not sure if this one's actually like fantasy, but I don't care. I'm going with it anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to read this one as well. Uh, and so that fulfills that poll. Then we got yet another yellow, so another history. Historical. So again, I was able to move two spaces. Um, for this one, we got Aurora, which was Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. Um, so that's a fun one. And for this one, let's see here. I chose... There it is. <laughs> I went with Montana Rose by Mary Conley. Um kind of struggled with this one finding a historical that I thought would work. So there were some other ones that I was interested in, but I didn't think they quite fit. And so this one, since it has rose, you know, that's a flower. So that's flora. Um, I'm going with it. And this is a Chris Christian fiction. Uh, I picked it up at the thrift store and I have one at the next one in this series as well. So it says... Widowed one day, wedded the next. Cassie Griffin has always dressed in silks. Her free-spending husband expects nothing less. But now he has died, leaving her unprotected, heavily in debt, and pregnant. As any single woman doesn't remain so for long and divide Montana, Cassie wonders if marrying one of the local cowboys might be her only choice. After seeing her choices, she then wonders if joining her husband might be even better. Red Dawson has always found, had a soft spot in his heart for Cassie, even though most of the townspeople see her only as a silk-clad china doll. When she's left a window, only one thing keeps him from immediately sweeping her off her feet. She's a non-believer. As the other cowboys lay claim to Cassie, the most powerful rancher in the area steps forward to demand what he thinks rightly belongs to him. 
and the property that goes with her. Red struggles with figuring out what to do, but decides he can't allow Cassie to suffer a fate worse than death and marries her himself. Will Red win over the seemingly fragile and spoiled China doll's heart and survive her unique brand of ranch help in the meantime? Will Cassie find true love with her cowboy and his god when she exchanges smooth silk for coarse calico? So, I don't know. Sounds like it'll be a good time. So hopefully I'll enjoy it. Then let's see here. Then we got Red, which is a romance. And for this one, we actually ended up crossing the bridge to the next Red. So that means, again, it doesn't have to be a romance. It can be any genre. But we got Mowgli and it's returning home. If it wants to focus, I don't know that it does. But so returning home. Um, and so this one, again, was a little bit of a struggle. But I decided to go with Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. Um, this is actually a nonfiction and it is the story of um, this guy out of the World War II and he was stranded and trying to fight his way home. So it says, on a May afternoon in 1943, an Army Air Force's bomber crashed into the Pacific Ocean and disappeared, leaving only a spray of debris, a slick of oil, gasoline, and blood. Then on the ocean surface, a face appeared. It was that of a young lieutenant, the plane's bombardier, who was struggling to a life raft and pulling himself aboard. So began one of the most extraordinary odysseys of the Second World War. And it says, you know, a World War II survive, story of survival, resilience, and redemption. So, trying to survive, get back home. So that's perfect for that one. Um, and I am excited to read it, so it, sh it should work out okay. Then we got a green, which is fantasy. And for this, we got Pooh, Best Friends Forever, which I love that. So I needed a fantasy that had, like, close friendships. I kind of regret doing this since it was such a good month, but it's also a good month to do it because I'm, the reading isn't as heavy. So I'm going to be rereading The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I originally listened to this. And I want to read it physically before I jump into A Day of Fall and Night, which I know isn't necessary. It's just for my own preference. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start this. I will hopefully finish it in June. If not, I'm going to just roll it over. I'm not going to rush this at all. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to actually physically read this. And I do remember there's some friendships that are pretty cemented in there. So... I thought that would work for that one, that chunky one. So this one is, it was supposed to be a standalone. And like I said, the A Day of Fall and Night, the prequel, is not really have anything to do with this. It's just set in the same world. But <coughs> basically you have the House of Brethnet has ruled Ennis for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabran the Ninth must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destructions. Destruction, but assassins are getting closer to her door. Ia Durin is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of lady-in-waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Ia keeps a watchful eye on Sabran, secretly protecting her with forbidden magic. Across the Dark Sea, Tanae has trained to be a dragon rider since she was a child but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parlay, and forces of chaos are rising from their sleep. So, there's that one. And let's see here then. We got to move a big chunk, which really helped us out. So we got a purple, again, any genre. And for this one, we got spirit again. And so this is Native American rep. Love that. And there's two I could go with with this one, but the choice was pretty obvious. I decided to finally pick up There There by Tommy Orange. I've been trying to sneak this in as an extra on TBRs for months and months. Finally decided, you know what, like, let's just put it on the shelf and wait until I can get it officially on the TBR. And this is the month. So I'm going to be reading There There by Tommy Orange. Um, and this says, Tommy Orange's Wondrous 
and shattering novel follows 12 characters from the native communities, all traveling to the big Oakland powwow, all connected to one another in ways they may not yet realize. Among them is Jackie Redfeather, newly sober and trying to make it back to the family she left behind. Danae Oxendine, pulling his life together after his uncle's death and working at the powwow to honor his memory. 14-year-old Orville, coming to perform traditional dance for the first time. Together, this chorus of voices tells us of the plight of the urban Native American, grappling with complex and painful history, with an inheritance of beauty and spirituality, with communion and sacrifice and heroism. Held as an instant classic, though there is at once poignant and unflinching, utterly contemporary and truly unforgettable. And I've heard really good things from this, about this. So, glad I can officially get it on TBR and get it read. Then we got an orange, which brought us right up to the end. And we got Tigger, which is out of comfort zone. So, orange is a mystery or a thriller. And for this one, another big book. It's like 700 and some pages. Priory is just over 800. I'm going to be choosing the the Parsifal Mosaic by Robert Ludham. My husband got me this for Christmas and he had some criteria that it was like the best seller um, around my birthday. I can't remember exactly what his criteria was. But this one is definitely intimidate, intimidating to me. Um, I don't read a whole lot of this type of thriller and it is chunky so but it says michael havlick's world died on a moonlit beach on the coast of brava as he watched his partner level lover double agent jenna caris efficiently gunned down by his own agency there's nothing left for him but to quit the game and get out then in one frantic moment on a crowded railroad platform in rome havlock sees jenna Racing around the globe in search of his beautiful betrayer, Havelock is now marked for death by both U.S. and Russian assassins. Trapped in a massive mosaic of treachery created by top-level mole with the world in his fist, Parsifal. So, I'm excited to read it and hopefully I enjoy it since my husband picked it out for me. And then last but not least, we went straight to the North Pole so we didn't have any unused discs, which is fantastic. And we got a blue, so sci-fi. Um, and we got a bookworm, which just is physical TBR. Does not want to focus today. The light's messing up. And so, anyway, sci-fi off my physical TBR. So this one was easy. We're going with Ferris by Marissa Meyer, because this is a sci-fi fantasy fairy tale mix. So, um, but definitely sci-fi. And yeah, I'm excited to read this and get the little short ones off of the Lunar Chronicles. Um, and so this should work perfect for this one. I don't know exactly. All I know is this is Levina's story. So Levina is the Lunar Queen from the Lunar Chronicles. Um, uh, she's kind of the bad guy in the story and this is kind of her origin. Uh, so excited. And luckily this one's short. So that should work. And then of course, as I already mentioned, I'll hopefully be reading Hunting Adeline by H.G. Carlton for my genre thon. I do normally participate in autism reads. I'm not going to be doing that this month. The book that is a pick, it's Colin Fisher. Um, I don't know the authors. I can't remember them. There's two authors. But I'll insert a picture here in case you're interested in participating. I'll also link um, Christine's channel down below so you can go over there if you want to join the Discord and see which books. But um, I've been kind of overdoing it and participating in things. And this is a good time to kind of take a break. One, the book is not one I'm interested in. Um, it's about this boy, an autistic boy, and during a classmate's birthday party, a gun appears and he's the only one that can investigate. So he's like being a detective of the story. It just doesn't sound like something that would be enjoyable for me. And like I said, it is a good time to kind of take a break because Kim, who does Expedition, Tales from Two Trails, her channel's Expedition Through Pages, um, she's kind of taking a break because we won a April's round. Um, we finished up in April anyway and won the round. And so she's taking a break and then we'll resume in July. Um, 
and I'm not planning on participating in any other readathons or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break from that. But if you're interested in participating in Autism Reads, you certainly, certainly can. So that is it. That's not bad. Um, so like I said, there's 11 from the prompts, 12. And then I did not get these three on, so I might add them on. So that would put my count at 15, which is definitely doable for me. So we have Death by Laura Thalaslet and then Battleground and Peace Talk. Talks by Jim Butcher, which are the last two currently in the Dresden Files. Um, there's a little one, like, audiobook that he released as well after these, but I'm not interested in that either. So, so hopefully I can squeeze those in as well. Um... But still, that would be 15 books, and that's not bad. So if I just read, you know, my prompts and my genre-thon book, it would be 5,586 pages, which I would need to read roughly 186 pages per day, which is definitely doable for me. Um, if I add on the other three, it's 7,084 pages, and I would need to read uh, 237 pages per day to complete my TBR. So hopefully I won't have any re rollovers or anything like that. Like I said, maybe um, Little Woman if I don't finish it in May. Um, but that one I'm just taking my time with. So not a huge deal. And hopefully I can get my uh, last two from my ABC author challenge done in May too. Um, but again, I'll just keep they're kind of bottom of the barrel if I get to them great if not oh well so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys here happy reading everyone bye